hi everybody! At the very basic level, computers store information as a series of ones and zeros called bits. Combine enough ones and zeros and you can store the entirety of human knowledge or a 9 minute 29 second YouTube video. Damn! As technology has improved, we've found better and better ways to store these ones and zeros, giving us more storage capacity in any given space. Now, very early computers didn't have hard drives. In order to feed them information, we used strips of paper with holes punched in them that represented ones and zeros. Now, the first big breakthrough with storage technology for early computers was using electricity to align magnetic particles as ones or zeros. And this gave rise to magnetic storage, such as tapes and floppy drives and hard disks. Floppy disks, or the save icon as today's youth call them, stored data magnetically on an internal round flexible disk, which if you took it out of the case, was floppy, hence the name. Now hard drives also store data magnetically and inside them they've got a solid disk which is a lot denser than you'd find inside a floppy disk and it spins much faster so you can store more data in the same space and read it and write it more quickly. Now with CDs and DVDs the information was burnt onto them really densely with lasers and because it uses light these are known as optical storage. Then we get solid state storage like you find in USB memory pens, storage cards and in modern computer hard drives. So flash memory can be much faster than magnetic storage devices. It doesn't have any moving parts, which makes it more robust, and it uses less power, which makes it great for things like mobile devices that run on batteries. Right, so that's all the stuff we know about already out of the way. The point of this video is to tell you about some interesting future exotic storage techniques that you might not have heard of. Some of it's being actively developed, while some of it for the moment is just still just straight up sci-fi. Seriously, what are these? They're amazing. I'm going to start off with a bit of a silly one, and that's using YouTube for data storage. So if you think about it, when you sign up for a YouTube account, they essentially give you free unlimited storage, expecting you to fill it with videos that people find entertaining. And if they enjoy it, they might even hit the like button and they might even consider subscribing to your channel. Why am I so bad at winking? But what if, instead of uploading cat videos or videos of yourself talking in front of an unusually blue background, you take the data that you want to store and you encode it visually into binary and then upload that as a video? Here's an example of exactly that. The data stored in what you're seeing on the screen right now describes the code used to make the video that you're seeing. Oh, how very meta. So we're basically talking complicated animated QR codes. So the first drawback of this is that I read that if you want to store one gigabyte of data, the video file that you produce is three and a half gigabytes in size. Secondly, it's probably against YouTube's terms of service because it's not really adding any value to the platform. So they might just delete it at any time. And thirdly, YouTube uses compression to save space, which means that you might lose quality on your video and you might not be able to read the data back. I thought it was an interesting idea though. How about you? Leave me a comment in the comments. So next we've got something called memory crystals. So if you think about CDs, they're flat, they're two dimensional. So you can only store information on one plane. The idea of memory crystals is you take a coin sized piece of special crystal and using a very precise laser, record data into it in thousands of layers. So not only are you storing information in three dimensions now, but the laser that stores the data can record it at different angles and at different sizes, which means you can encode even more information into the same space. If you're a word geek, this technique's called birefringence. Now, while they currently don't have a product on the market, they say theoretically one of these little crystal disks could hold up to 360 terabytes of information or well over half a million CDs worth. Not only that, but they say that each one of these will last over a thousand years. And that resilience has earned the technology the name of Superman memory crystals. Okay, so everything we've looked at so far has been technology invented by humans. What if we look at technology invented by nature? The realm of biomemory looks to store data in DNA, the very building blocks of life itself. So the idea is that we'd encode data into a language that could be stored in the existing natural DNA sequence format, then synthesize the actual DNA strands containing our data. This technology is so storage dense that you could, in theory, store every piece of information ever created by humans, and that's a lot, in just a few grams of DNA. I'm holding an invisible spoon, by the way. And if DNA is stored correctly, it can last for hundreds of thousands of years. Huh, the dinosaurs died out millions of years ago, so all their DNA will be gone, which means Jurassic Park was a lie. Oh yeah, science fiction. So as technology progresses, we're able to get more and more data stored in the same amount of space. In order to carry on doing this, your storage material needs to get smaller and smaller so we can pack it more densely together. 
So when it comes to storage, DNA is small, but we can still go smaller. Atomic memory. In 2017, IBM successfully stored one bit of data on a single atom. The idea is to eventually have hard drives arranging atoms for absolutely microscopically dense storage. So for storage, atoms are small, but we can go smaller. If you've read anything to do with quantum computers, you may have heard of a quantum bit or a qubit. So on its own, quantum doesn't actually mean the smallest of the small. It just means the smallest unit of something. So for example, the smallest unit of electricity would be an electron, which in that case is smaller than an atom. But there's nothing really saying that a qubit has to be stored on something smaller than an atom. It's just much easier to observe quantum effects on things on the microscopic scale when they're isolated and not interfering with each other, else your data can get corrupted. So a traditional bit is the concept of storing ones and zeros. A qubit is the concept of storing either a one or a zero or both at the same time. Hey? This extra level of information means you can store even more data in the same space. Now I've grilled ChatGPT to death trying to get it to explain this zero, one, or both at the same time thing to me. And it got to the point where it just said, you know what, just think of it as magic. <laughs> it's already so much smarter than I am. Quantum computers would actually be a good idea for another video if I can get my head around them. I wonder if chat GPT can explain things to me with sock puppets. Right, I promised you some exotic technologies now, so let's go mad into the far realms of sci-fi. There's absolutely no way we could even conceive of a technology to actually even entertain this next suggestion. But if it's physical density we're talking about for maximum storage, then you can't really get any better than encoding your data into a collapsed neutron star. <laughs> So after a supernova, when a star explodes, all the material falls back in on itself and its own gravity jams it together so densely that just a teaspoon of it would weigh around a billion tons. Or if you're American, around two and a half million 747 jumbo jets. So the theory says you'd actually encode your data into the magnetic fields around each neutron. But as you can imagine, there's a couple of drawbacks to this method. So the most notable two are the fact that the closest neutron star is around 500 light years away, and if you got anywhere near it, you'd die instantly. On the plus side, your Bitcoin password would be pretty safe. We can go one better than collapsed neutron stars though, black holes. So for ages, it was argued that information that goes into a black hole is destroyed, never to be seen again, which is quite a drawback if you want to store data in one. And so black holes have only made it into this video because the late great Stephen Hawking argued that information in a quantum system, i.e. a black hole, can't actually be destroyed. And eventually all information will leak back out of it in the form of something called Hawking radiation, which was named after Stephen Hawking himself. So as densities for storage go, density is calculated by mass divided by volume. And all of the mass in a black hole is squished together into a single point so tightly it has no volume, meaning it has an infinite density. So like you could easily store every episode of Buffy in it. I mean the drawbacks for this one speak for itself. If you forget your Netflix password, you just have to wait for the inevitable heat death of the entire universe for the information to just waft its way back out of the event horizon. Although that might still be quicker than getting a thousand subscribers on YouTube. In reality though, there's only ever been one thing recorded to have come out of a black hole and there's actually a NASA video of it. <laughs> oh, you! <laughs> so there you have it, a few ideas on the future of exotic storage to mull over while you're having your cornflakes. So please give me your opinions on any of this technology in the comments and let me know if I've missed any interesting technology. As always, it would be a massive help if you could click like on this video so the old YouTube algorithmicals will show it to more people. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel and turn the alerts on so you'll get pinged whenever I release a new video. I do try and release a new video every week, but it does depend on how much Far Cry 6 I've been playing. Also, if you like technology news as much as I do, head over to my website, yachty.co.uk, and sign up for my newsletter. Every so often, I'll send you an email with all the tech news that's caught my attention. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you soon.